Hello, I'm Professor John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. This is the third in a series of videos on automatic transmission fluid history. And this is on Ford automatic transmission fluids. Now in the first episode we looked at an overall introduction to automatic transmission fluid history. In the second episode we looked at the 80 year history of General Motors automatic transmission fluids. And we looked at them first because General Motors in 1939, 80 years ago, was the first to release the world's first mass-produced automatic transmission. Now the automatic transmission back then, the first automatic transmission, was a big hit. Everybody loved the automatic transmission and that's because it eliminated two big jobs of driving. One of them was that you didn't need to use the clutch pedal anymore. It didn't have a clutch pedal. The clutch pedal was replaced with a fluid coupling that today has evolved into what we call a torque converter. The second thing the, the GM hydromatic transmission did was it automatically shifted from one gear to the next. So those were two big technological advancements that no one had done in a mass produced environment up to that point. So a fluid coupling to get rid of the clutch pedal and automatic shifting to shift from one gear to the next. All those vehicles had was a gas pedal and a brake pedal. No clutch pedal, no shift lever to shift from one gear to the next. So that was in 1939. Now we can't talk about what Ford did with automatic transmissions without also talking about what Chrysler did in 1939. Now Chrysler was also attempting to come up with some way to make driving easier and safer. They eliminated the need for a clutch pedal under most conditions while driving their vehicles by replacing the traditional clutch with a fluid coupling. So in 1939, Chrysler released what was, what was called the fluid drive transmission. And the fluid drive transmission was a three-speed manual transmission. It still had a clutch disc, pressure plate, and flywheel, but that flywheel and pressure plate and clutch disc was connected to a fluid coupling that was then connected to the engine. Now I have a, a fluid drive over here. Let's take a look at it. This is the fluid coupling from the Chrysler fluid drive. And we, someone years ago cut a section out of it so that you can see the two impellers of the fluid drive here as I rotate it. Now I want you to notice that the, the turbine impeller that would drive the transmission is connected to the pressure plate of, of a manual transmission. So we've got a flywheel, a pressure plate, and a clutch disc all right here connected to a fluid coupling. <laughs> so you could step on the clutch pedal, put your three-speed transmission into whatever gear you wanted, depending on if you're doing city driving or highway driving, and then let the clutch pedal out the fluid coupling with the engine running uh, would allow the engine to keep running at a idle. It wouldn't stall. And then just like with an automatic transmission, you would step on the gas pedal and the vehicle would slowly accelerate away as the fluid uh, would drive uh, the uh, clutch disc and the input shaft of the transmission to make the vehicle move down the road. So Chrysler's fluid drives, and they had many different names uh, of this system uh, from 1939 up through 1955, uh, and variations of this, but this was their way of making a vehicle safer and easier to drive. And from what I understand, talking to people at car shows that I've been to, uh, it's real easy to drive and, and people loved it. Uh, the only uh, strange thing about it is if you put the transmission in too high of a gear, you wouldn't have much acceleration. You'd have to step on the clutch pedal, move the transmission to a lower gear, and then let the clutch pedal back out, and then you could accelerate uh, more quickly. But uh, one guy I spoke to at a car show recently said uh, he just leaves it in third gear and drives it around town that way and drives it down the highway that way. Uh, also, and as long as he's not in a big hurry to, to accelerate, then it's no big deal. So this was Chrysler's fluid drive system, which was a 
in no means a, an automatic shifting transmission, but it got rid of the need for the clutch pedal under most conditions. And it used a special fluid called the Mopar fluid drive fluid that went inside of it. Well, Ford, it turns out, copied this. They, <laughs> they copied this idea. And in 1941, for the 1942 model year, uh, released a transmission in uh, as an option in Mercury. There was a Mercury and some Lincolns that you could get the new liquimatic drive. They called it the liquimatic drive. So as you can see here in this picture, um, it shows the liquimatic drive and describes how smooth it is and what it does and so on. And it basically was a fluid coupling just like this. But then it had a manual transmission that was shifted for you. Uh, it used vacuum solenoids and vacuum motors to move the shift forks back and forth to actually shift the manual transmission for you. So in a way, it was, it was a little bit more advanced than the original Chrysler fluid drive, although the later ones did the same thing in Chrysler's. But Ford did that at the, for the beginning of the 1942 model year, uh, and then the U.S. was drawn into World War II at the end of 1941, halfway through the 1942 model year, and production stopped in February or March of vehicles with the liquimatic drive because of uh, World War II. And after World War II, towards the end of 1945, when production resumed uh, on making vehicles again, uh, they dropped the liquimatic drive. Apparently it had a lot of problems and from what I've read, dealers were taking the liquimatic drive systems out of the vehicles that they were put in and replacing them with manual transmissions and regular clutches. So Ford had an entry into the attempted automatic transmission field, but never really got in uh, full speed prior to World War II. One more thing on Ford's liquimatic drive. They didn't use a special fluid inside of it. Uh, according to the service information that I found in a 1946 Motors manual and in some magazines uh, that people have sent me with history and information on that liquimatic drive, it used just regular SAE 10 weight, real lightweight oil, motor oil, in the fluid drive of the liquimatic. In 1949, Lincoln started offering the General Motors hydromatic transmission in their vehicles. So as you can see here in this picture, in this magazine ad, they were advertising the hydromatic transmission. So the uh, transmission interchanging between General Motors and Ford has been going on a, a lot longer than, uh, than just recent history. Uh, they've done it several times uh, since then, but uh, Lincoln, the Lincoln luxury cars, uh, offered from 1949 through 1954, it looks like, uh, the hydromatic transmission, the four-speed transmission in their luxury cars. This ad here uh, has a couple of things that are interesting. Uh, this is a 1953 ad. And it says that it has a new 205 horsepower V8 engine with the hydromatic transmission. It also says it has new power brakes, new power steering, and the world's first four-way power elevator seat. So the, an electric seat to uh, go up and down. Apparently they're claiming that's the world's first at the, in that car right there. So that's uh, very interesting. I've got a 1952 Lincoln chassis service manual here. And the transmission fluid called for in the hydromatic in the Lincoln um, was called Lincoln Automatic Transmission Fluid. <laughs> so they rebranded the uh, General Motors uh, hydromatic transmission fluid, since that's the fluid that that transmission takes. Uh, it says, it is important to use only Lincoln Automatic Transmission Fluid. This is an all-season fluid, ideal for year-round operation caution, flushing of the unit is not recommended. So uh, I've searched all over 
eBay and everywhere I can think of to try to find a can of Lincoln automatic transmission fluid, I can't find one. Uh, I, I was lucky to even find a General Motors hydromatic can of fluid, or a couple of them. I found a couple different ones uh, for the old original hydromatics, but they were very rare in Lincolns, and um, that fluid has got to be just an extremely rare bottle <laughs> or can uh, to come by. So if any of you ever, ever see one, uh, I'd like to, like to see a photograph of it if you'd send me one. All right, so Lincoln used uh, General Motors Hydromatic Transmission. Now, in 1950, Ford finally released their own fully automatic uh, three-speed transmission. Now, there's some uh, brochures that Ford released at the time talking about their new Ford-O-Matic uh, transmission, and I, I opened it up and started reading through here uh, a what, or several months ago when I bought this and, and had to kind of chuckle. Now remember, this is 1950 for the 1951 model year. So this is 11 full model years after General Motors released their automatic transmission. So I don't know what the problem was at Ford, why they delayed so long coming up with their own automatic transmission. But uh, listen, to the sp listen to the publicity the PR, public relations uh, spin on uh, why they waited so long. Uh, with the introduction of the ford matic drive, Ford is making available to the motoring public the automotive industry's finest achievement in automatic transmission engineering. ford matic has been under development for many years now, uh, during which time the basic design has been tested, studied, and compared with other automatic transmissions originating both in this country and abroad. Uh, Fordomatic owners will definitely benefit from these years of engineering study and research, uh, which place the new Fordomatic drive well ahead of most automatic transmissions. And the comparative table on page 23 provides substantial evidence of that fact. So they waited, my interpretation of that, is they waited 11 years because they were studying and wanted to come up with the finest transmission they could. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what a bunch of baloney. Uh, anyway, they finally, <laughs> finally released an automatic transmission in 1951, the three-speed ford o -Matic. Now, Ford had not developed their own automatic transmission fluid, so everybody, up until... A, uh, about 1959, 1960, everyone with an automatic transmission was using General Motors automatic transmission fluids. So go back and look at episode two if you want to learn more about General Motors automatic transmission fluids. But the fluid that's called for in the ford o uh, transmission is the General Motors Type A fluid. So... I've got two examples of the Type A fluid. Uh, General Motors licensed uh, the production of that fluid as long as it met the armor qualification standards. So here is a can of Gulf Type A fluid, and it has a license number on the top of AQATF-291. So this is a licensed bottle or can of General Motors Type A fluid. This is fluid would have been approved for use in the ford matic transmission. Here's a can from uh, the Texas company, uh, Texaco Texomatic Fluid uh, Type A, it says right there, and it has an armor qualification number of AQATF102. So both of these Type A fluids would have been approved for use in the ford matic automatic transmission. So General Motors developed that fluid specification, the Type A fluid specification, in 1949. Uh, prior to that, it would have been the hydromatic transmission fluid that I showed you previously. Okay, so right back here is the ford matic transmission. I've not had time to clean it up very much or play with it yet, uh, but I'm going to. So 1951 through 65... Ford automatic drive three speed and as I mentioned it used this uses the General Motors type A 
automatic transmission fluid. Now, by 1959, uh, Ford had decided that they were needing to develop their own automatic transmission fluids for their automatic transmissions. Because since the Ford Omatic came out in 1950, uh, Ford had released several other automatic transmissions. There was a Mercomatic that was used in Mercury's that was basically the Ford Omatic. Uh, they had a Cruise Omatic, they had the Lincoln Turbo Drive, they had a they had a Mercury multi drive. As you can see in this magazine ad here, here's a 1953 Ford Omatic uh, automatic transmission advertisement and it it reads uh, you don't drive a Ford, it drives you. Uh, talking about how easy it is to, to drive. It reads, a Ford car is probably the most helpful car you've ever laid your hands on. Not only does it seem to think for you, it acts for you. Just turn the key and it starts. If you're driving a Ford-O-Matic Ford, just put the drive selector in drive and it shifts for you. A whale of a lot better than you could ever do by hand. You get exactly the right amount of power you want when you want it automatically. Now you simply can't beat that. <laughs> cool stuff. In all of the Fordomatic manuals that I've purchased, uh, they all have a fluid um, fluid level check interval and a fluid uh, type. Uh, this tells us to check the fluid level every 1,000 miles and that it uses a type A fluid. And this is a 1956 um, Fordomatic manual. Now, another interesting automatic transmission that Ford uh, came up with is the, here's a 1957-58 Transmatic drive. This was a six-speed automatic transmission that they used in their medium duty and heavy duty trucks. Incredible, they had a six speed uh, automatic transmission back then. And if I open it up to the page where they talk about lubricants and fluid level and, and all that stuff, this also says, if necessary, add automatic transmission fluid type A to the this transmission. Um, so, uh, oh, by the way, this fluid level or this fluid should be changed every 10,000 miles. Unless it's used off highway, then it should be every 5,000 miles. So that's a transmatic drive, but still the same type A fluid. Uh, I've got a manual here for the Lincoln Turbo Drive, and it tells us to use five quarts of type A automatic transmission fluid. It even gives us the part number 8L-19582. So by 1959, Ford had released their own fluid specification that they called their type A fluid. And from what I've read, it had type GM type A suffix A fluid characteristics. So it was very much like the GM fluid, but modified just a little bit for whatever needs Ford had. Uh, also in 1959, they made another revision to that fluid and called it the Type B fluid. And then for, from what I've found, I couldn't find a Type C fluid being referenced, but I did find a Type D fluid. And the Type D fluid, I actually have a, a can of right here. This is Ford's, from 1960, Type D fluid. Uh, this can has 8 of 1960 as the date on it, and across the front of it here it has Ford, Thunderbird, Mercury, Lincoln, Continental, and Edsel as uh, Ford brands that this fluid uh, services. It has the old Ford logo, and uh, on the back it says, for complete service instructions, refer to Ford lubrication chart. So it doesn't give us uh, much information uh, other than that. And so the type D fluid was introduced for the 19 year in 1960 um, and it ended up being used in the previous Ford transmissions uh, as well as in 1964 the C4 three-speed transmission and in 1966 the C6 uh, three-speed automatic transmission 
and in 1968 the FMX uh, three-speed transmission. So that's the Type D fluid. So in 1967 Ford released a fluid specification called Type F. Now this is not a Ford brand but this is a Ford licensed uh, Type F fluid. It gives the uh, fluid or the license number here on the top of the can and the, f the fluid standard and says it meets the Type F uh, specification. So Ford, just like General Motors, licensed other uh, resellers to rebrand and s make their own fluid as long as it met their fluid specifications and when it was tested and passed those specifications then they would receive a license number like you would see here on the top of these cans. And from what I can see on these license numbers the uh, the cans or the license number is actually the date of the the date the license was issued or the date of the standard I'm, I'm not sure but uh, the type F fluid from what I can tell was released in 1967 and was used for many many years uh, here's an actual Ford can of type F uh, fluid it doesn't really say type F fluid on it but if you read the the lid here the license number and has a type F or a F after that license number indicates it's a type F fluid. Texaco, of course, had their own type F fluid. Here's Quaker State, Ford Lincoln Mercury uh, fluid. Here's a little bit newer but faded in the sun uh, Motorcraft type F fluid. Uh, here's Pennzoil type F and interesting uh, Texaco released one pint uh, cans of type F fluid rather than the quarts or pint or, or liters I mean that would be released in uh, Canada or, or other countries so the type F fluid from what I can tell came along around 1967 and was used uh, for a number of years uh, until 1974 when the next fluid specification came out. Now why do, these, why do these fluid specifications change? Why did Ford change them? Well for different operating characteristics of different transmissions. From what I've read the Ford type F fluid gave some fairly hard shifts. The next fluid specification to be released is the type CJ fluid, Ford type CJ fluid. Now this fluid specification came out in 1974 and it gave more smooth shifts than the type F fluid did. And so there were transmissions that were built for the type F, there were transmissions built for the type CJ. In the service information that I have here it tells us not to interchange those two. Um, type F needs type F, type F transmissions need type F fluid and, and type CJ uh, transmissions need the, the CJ fluid. All right I have another can of type CJ fluid here uh, but it, as you can see it says that it's Dexron 2 automatic transmission fluid from Motorcraft. You might be wondering well why would Motorcraft be using Dexron 2? Well there were some transmissions that Ford used that required Dexron 2 automatic transmission fluid. Uh, there were some uh, manual transmissions and there were some automatic transmissions. Ford used a ZF automatic transmission in some of their vehicles that required Dexron 2. So Ford sold a licensed and it's got a, a GM Dexron 2D license number right here on the top of the can but this also on the top of the can uh, tells us that it's uh, compatible with the Ford type CJ fluid specification so the type CJ fluid specification was the first one that had some cross compatibility with the GM Dexron 2 automatic transmission fluid and it would be the 2D as shown here on the license number. This has a license number of D21133. 
So Ford sold licensed GM Dexron automatic transmission fluid, and they also said you could use it in transmissions that called for type CJ right here on the top of the, of the can. It also says it's compatible with the older General Motors type A suffix A fluid. So this one can of Dexron fluid from Motorcraft is compatible with Ford type CJ, Dexron 2D, and the old GM type A suffix A. So this was the first of what became some cross compatibility, kind of a unique time in history of Ford and General Motors fluids having very similar fluid characteristics. All right, a couple of other things happened in the early 70s besides uh, the CJ fluid being released in 1974. In 1971, Group 2 base oils started to be refined with a new refining process. So prior to 1971, all transmission fluids were made of a Group 1 base oil plus a whole bunch of additives. And a Group 1 base oil is a lower quality uh, base oil that has to be changed quite frequently. Group 2 is a little bit better and doesn't need to be changed quite as frequently and doesn't require as many additives as the Group 1. Uh, in 1973, which is probably why in here in 1974 Ford released the Type CJ fluid, um, the, or the industry as a whole, the automatic transmission fluid industry, uh, finally got rid of using whale, sperm whale oil in their automatic transmission fluids. And there's a lot of bad information out there saying that it was a friction modifier. It was not a friction modifier. It was an anti-corrosion, anti-rust additive that would coat everything. And then when the moisture in the air was present, when the vehicle's not being driven, it would prevent surface rust and corrosion from taking place. So they had to replace that with another anti-corrosion, anti-rust uh, additive. And then in 1974, a Group 4 base oil uh, started to be refined for use in motor oils. Uh, and it was not used in automatic transmission fluids for, for many, many years. All right, so we've looked at the type CJ fluid that was released in 1974. Let's move on now to the type H fluid. <laughs> Type H. In the late 1970s, torque converters added an additional part called a torque converter clutch that, when applied, would connect the crankshaft of the engine directly to the input shaft of the automatic transmission. And this input or this torque converter clutch, as it hydraulically applied and released, would shudder with the previous fluids. And so there was a revision to the fluids that almost every automobile manufacturer made in the late 70s, early 80s. Ford released in 1981 the Type H fluid specification, which helped address the torque converter shuddering issue, which we still have shuddering issues <laughs> today. Now, I could not find a, a can of Ford Type H, but I found a can of Mobile Type four H, and notice it reads that it's Dexron 2 and Ford Type H compatible. But on the top of the can here, it only has a Dexron license number. So this is really Dexron 2 automatic transmission fluid. It's called Mobile Universal ATF. Um, but they're claiming type Ford Type H uh, compatibility, but it does not have, in the details back here, a Ford license number for the Type H. So this shows me that the Ford Type H and the Dexron 2D, as evidenced with the license number here, uh, were also cross uh, compatible. So according to Ford's own specs here, and their own bottled uh, fluid, the Type CJ and Dexron 2D were compatible. The Type H and Dexron 2D are compatible. That's it as far as those fluids are concerned. So after the Type CJ fluid was released, Ford only released one automatic transmission, one new automatic transmission, the C3, three-speed automatic used in the 1974 and above Ford Pinto. Uh, after the Type H fluid was released, 
they released four new automatic transmissions, one in 1982, the C5 transmission, that was basically the C4 transmission with a torque converter clutch. In 1985, they released the A4LD, which was a four-speed automatic with a torque converter clutch. In 1986, they released the AXOD four-speed, and 1986 also the A4 LD, both of those four-speed automatics with torque converter clutches to improve fuel economy. Because of the newly enacted for 1978 uh, corporate average fuel economy ratings, they had to do something like add four speeds and a torque converter clutch to improve the fuel economy of these vehicles. All right, so that was 1981. In 1987, Ford released the very first Mercon fluid specification. Now, this Mercon fluid specification is a real confusing specification today because all of Ford's fluids today have the word Mercon in them. So here's a Mercon V, here's a Mercon SP, Mercon LV, Mercon ULV. All of those have the word Mercon in. The original Mercon fluid just said Mercon. It didn't have any letters or anything else after it. It was just Mercon. Now, in today in the aftermarket uh, world of automatic transmission fluids, if like on this uh, bottle of O'Reilly fluid, it says it's compatible for use in General Motors and Ford automatic transmissions. But if you read the details on the back here, it says that this high quality product is suitable for use in all General Motors and Ford automatic transmissions calling for, and I'm going to skip all the GM ones, this one calls for in Ford, the Mercon specification released in 1987 and the type CJ fluid that was released in 1974. So this bottle of fluid and almost all of them that say Dex Merck or multi-vehicle or uh, multi-platform, multi-transmission, universal fluid, all of those, you need to read the fine print on the back and see if it just says that it's compatible with Mercon. Because if it is, it's not any of these. It's only that old original 1987 Mercon. I can't even find a bottle of old Mercon or a can of it anywhere. Uh, I believe they were in plastic bottles and everybody just uh, threw them away when they got done with them. Uh, they're not for sale on eBay like old metal cans uh, being collected. But uh, anyway, that's Mercon. That came out in 1987. And after the release of that uh, transmission fluid specification, from 1980, 89 through 1997, Ford released 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 more automatic transmissions. Most of those were four speed automatics with torque converter clutches. The last two in 1997 were actually five speeds. Uh, Ford's first five speed uh, automatic transmissions. Okay, another thing happened in the late 1980s. In 1989, Mobile One released their very first synthetic automatic transmission fluid from a Group 4 PAO uh, base oil. So I have this can of Mobile One engine oil. This is not transmission fluid. I could not find a, a can of the original 1989 uh, mobile one full synthetic automatic transmission fluid. This is an old SFCC uh, motor oil uh, still in the can, original mobile one uh, synthetic motor oil. But in 1989, that was the first year for a fully synthetic automatic transmission fluid. And so anything prior to that was not full synthetic. This used a group four base oil, which is a high quality base oil. Uh, in the transmission fluid. It was very expensive. And uh, so that was the first year for that. Uh, also sometime in the 1990s, there was a Group 2 Plus base oil that was more highly refined, less reactive. It had a viscosity index that was at the high range of the 
group 2 base oils which made it a better quality longer lasting uh, oil and then around 1993 from what I can find group 3 base oils were produced for use in engine oils and eventually have made their way into automatic transmission fluids so later automatic transmission fluids have been made from group 3 base oils and there's a group 3 plus base oil that has viscosity indexes at the higher range of the group 3 specifications which are all higher quality uh, automatic transmission fluids so the late 80s and, and through the 90s were some important years for base oils which is what automatic transmission is made from and then we have anywhere from 3 to 12 percent of the transmission fluid being additives depending on what type of base oil it's it's combined with and then in 1996 Ford updated their fluid specifications and released the Mercon V fluid Mercon V fluid now on the back here it tells us on the Mercon V uh, label on the back it's used in automatic and manual transmissions and power steering systems previously serviced by Mercon so they're saying you can use Mercon V to replace uh, the previous Mercon fluids but you could not use the previous Mercon fluids in place of Mercon V they don't they're not cross interchangeable like that okay uh, the Mercon V fluid as I said came out in 1996 uh, and after that, Ford released two other transmissions, the 4R100 uh, four-speed automatic in their uh, trucks and SUVs, and a front-wheel drive 4F27E uh, in their front-wheel drive passenger cars. It was This fluid specification was revised again in 2002, and Ford released three more automatic transmissions uh, after that. So that's the Mercon V fluid. In 2001, Ford released a brand new transmission called the 5R100W. And this was a heavy duty auto, five speed automatic transmission they called the torque shift that they put in their heavier pickup trucks with um, the higher torque engines. And for that transmission, they released the Mercon SP fluid. Now, the Mercon SP fluid, if we look on the back here, it says do not use for applications where Mercon V, the previous fluid, uh, was called for, or the newer Mercon LV or the Mercon ULV. So this is only Mercon SP, and it's only for specific uh, automatic transmissions made by Ford. So don't interchange the SP with other uh, fluids other previous or newer fluids all right so that was 2001 in 2005 Ford had partnered with General Motors to produce the Ford built 6F50 six-speed front-wheel drive transaxle General Motors built the 6T70 six-speed front-wheel drive transaxle and with that transmission Ford released the Mercon LV for low viscosity fluid General Motors released the Dexron 6 fluid uh, for their transmissions so on the back of the Mercon LV bottle it tells us it's recommended for transmissions where Mercon LV is specified it does not give us any previous compatibility um, indication so Mercon LV only used in transmissions that call for Mercon LV and after 2005 uh, for 2006 and 2007, Ford released, uh, looks like uh, in 2006, two new automatic transmissions. Then they revised the fluid specification a little bit uh, for the LV in 2007 and released three more uh, transmissions. The 6F50, the front-wheel drive six-speed, the 6R80, a rear-wheel drive uh, six-speed that's in pickup trucks, uh, and Mustangs, and then the light duty 6F35 in 2009. Uh, they revised that fluid specification again, the Mercon LV, in 2010, 
and released the 6R140, a big heavy-duty uh, six-speed automatic transmission for their uh, heavier uh, pickup trucks. And that's also used in the HF35 hybrid and plug-in hybrid uh, Fusion and C-Max uh, electronic continuously variable transmissions in, the, in their hybrids. Okay, then in 2014, Ford released the Mercon ULV automatic transmission fluid. Now, that fluid specification was in preparation for the Ford 10R80 automatic transmission sitting here, this 10-speed automatic. I've got the guts out of it standing up right here. This 10R80 was a joint venture between General Motors and Ford, and Ford uh, put this in their 2017 F-150, and newer vehicles, GM, started using it in their uh, Camaro and, and pickup truck. Ford put it in their Mustang as well. But here's the Ford ULV, Mercon ULV fluid. Here's the General Motors AC Delco uh, ULV, Dexron ULV fluid. Um, this is a, a special fluid just for this 10 speed. ULV stands for ultra low viscosity. So it tells us right on this bottle to only use where Mercon ULV is, is called for and it has no backward compatibility with previous fluids. Now, since this transmission came out, General Motors released some information on their ULV fluid saying that it, before putting this fluid in the vehicle that you need to shake it up to make sure that all the additives uh, haven't separated and that they mix in with the fluid properly. I haven't seen that on the Ford side, but I suspect since it's the same fluid, and that fluid specification was actually written by Ford. Here's the actual Ford fluid specification right here. Um, WSS-M2C949-A is the ultra-low viscosity uh, fluid specification. Uh, I suspect that that's got to be an issue with the Ford fluids as well and so that's unique because I've never heard of another fluid that you needed to shake the bottle up uh, before you poured it in the vehicle to uh, make sure that you're pouring in a consistent mix of fluid and additives okay so that was Ford's that is Ford's latest and last fluid that I'm aware of uh, here in uh, let's see this is February of 2019 now, it's very important that you put the proper fluid in your transmission if you want that vehicle and that transmission to operate like it did when it was new. As I mentioned before, there are a lot of aftermarket fluids that claim compatibility with different transmissions, but you need to read, buyer beware, on the back what it's compatible with. Here's some Mobile One. Uh, synthetic ATF multi-vehicle formula it says right on the front Ford GM and a wide variety of domestic and imported vehicles but if we look on the back panel here it tells us that it's recommended by Exxon Mobil not Ford uh, for use in and it lists a bunch of uh, General Motors fluid specifications Ford Mercon it doesn't say Mercon V or LV or SP or ULV. Ford Mercon, the 1987 Ford Mercon specification. As a matter of fact, there's an asterisk and it actually says right on it, not recommended for applications requiring Ford Mercon LV, SP, or GM Dexron 6. So even what some people I've talked to think is this magically wonderful uh, mobile one fluid you still need to read the back panel don't pay attention to this front panel and it's not really a lie but it's not the full truth either you got to read the back here and understand that when it says it's compatible with Mercon it doesn't mean all of these Mercons anything that has the word Mercon on it it's just that 1987 Mercon and that's a little misleading, and it's not just 
mobile. I've got uh, O'Reilly, I've got uh, Proline, uh, and I've looked online and uh, Pennzoil and Quaker State and uh, a, a whole bunch of, well, all other. You go find any type of automatic transmission fluid that's not a licensed Ford product with a, with a license number. It'll have a license number right on it uh, telling you, like here's the license number right here, Mercon ULV license number MULV160703 right there in fine print. If it doesn't have a Mercon license number on it, it's not appro approved by Ford for your vehicle. And I don't care what the, the front of the, the container says, you need to read the back there to make sure that you're getting the right fluid for your Ford transmission in your Ford vehicle. And that's true for any automatic transmission in any brand. Uh, I highly recommend using only factory fluids don't buy anything that says multi-vehicle or multi-transmission or universal fluid without making sure that it's compatible with your vehicle. And, and I've yet to see one that's compatible with these newer fluids. So unless you've got a really old vehicle, those old fluids, which aren't even, still aren't even Ford approved, uh, are, you're just taking the manufacturer's word for that fluid that it's going to work in your transmission and work properly. All right, one last thing I wanted to show you. Uh, it's a Ford uh, special service message. And this is from uh, 2013. It applies to 2013 through 2016 Taurus police and Explorer police uh, vehicles. And it the title of this document is uh, top speed reduced after transmission service. So let me read this to you. Some 2013 through 2016 Taurus police and Explorer police vehicles may exhibit reduced top speed after a transmission fluid service with unapproved fluid. <laughs> the use of unapproved fluid or improper transmission fluid level can lead to reduced vehicle performance and transmission damage and is not covered under warranty. Use only Mercon LV to transmission fluid in those vehicles. Uh, tr fluid exchange process when performing service intervals. Check and adjust the transmission fluid level only at normal operating temp temperatures, which is 82 to 93 Celsius, or 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The fluid adjustment procedure requires using the appropriate service tool to verify proper fluid temperature. For optimum high speed performance, adjust the fluid level to the top of the minimum mark if the vehicle has a dipstick. So here's one where the, the top speed of the vehicle was reduced by somebody changing the fluid to an improper fluid. All right, well, that is a look at Ford transmission fluid history since 1941 with that original liquimatic drive uh, transmission in Mercury's and, and Lincoln's, just a few of them. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. In the next episode, we will look at Chrysler and Mopar automatic transmission fluids. And then the episode after that will be Toyota automatic transmission fluids. Thank you for watching.